Right, so let's look at this lab uh, where we're going to use a Metasploitable website and then a vulnerability scanner and this will be Kali. So you should find that the host will connect to, to through DHCP and you'll be allocated uh, an IP address from them. Okay, so one of the main things we'll have a look at is how we discover vulnerabilities on, on websites and how we can go forward and, and exploit them. Also to be able to understand what the web logs will actually look like for each of these, these attacks. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is that we'll actually open up our two virtual machines. And here we are. So we have a Kali one. And then we have a Metasploitable one. Okay, so let's place that one there. And then the other one here. Okay, so I, I've started up the, the user interface on on Kali, uh, what you can do is I'll just restart it. In fact, I'll just restart both of them just so that you can see us back at the at the starting place. So I'll power that one off. And then I'll power this one off too. And then we'll just start back up again. Okay, so we should be able to get it started from there. Okay, so, so we're going to go from the Kali machine into the Metasploitable image and be able to run various tools from, from there. Okay, so that's our Kali instance started up and the metasploitable one is getting there too okay so there we are and then for this one uh, we can log in let's try that again Okay, so we can get logged in. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just start the, the X Windows server so that we can get a graphical interface on our Metasploitable instance. So the first thing that you need to do is to get rid of this lock on a file, X0 lock. So this is fine. And that's a started up with our Metasploitable instance. Just right click and you should be able to bring up some terminals and, and so on. So let's just bring up a shell here. There we are. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to have a look at what our IP addresses are because we're going to go from one machine to another. So that's 10200047 there. And then over here, and the MAC address is this one here. And then over here, we have 024. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick scan of the network to see what hosts are actually alive. And we do that on a 24-bit subnet mask. It just takes a little minute to run. Okay, so here are the machines. There's the default gateway, and we should be able to see 47 appearing quite soon.
and it is there. Okay, so there it's there, there's the MAC address and so on. Okay, so what we'll do next is to actually have a look at the ports, the, the web ports, it's web that we're mainly interested in. So we'll have a look at the ports for 80 and 8080 are the two default ports that we're going to use. And then we're scanning 47. Okay, so we can see here that we have HTTP and HTTP proxy set up for 80 and an 88. The next thing we can do is to be able to look at the the minus SV to be able to fingerprint these these services that are the web services that are running. And there we go. We can see as an Apache HTTP daemon 2.2.8 Ubuntu and and so on. So often what we do is we now uh, look at the we we look at the service using netcat. So we'll zero dot forty seven on port eighty. We do head slash http point one Press return a couple of times and then it comes back uh, with uh, the server information there. We can do the same with uh, with the option options request. See the options is given as a uh, some information about the, the the website. Those over here will then have a look at the the logs. So we'll find them in var log and then Apache two. We'll have a look at the tail of access to log and we can see here here is there's the head and the options okay so uh, we can actually see the return there's a 400 to return rather than a 200 and we can pick up from the log the IP address and 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 so on okay so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to run Wireshark over here. And we'll just run it as sudo. Okay, so I'll just move that on there. And then we're going to run nick two on the host and we're going to this address here. And then we'll just capture that data. So we might see a lot of uh, background data. So what we'll do is we'll just focus on the, uh, the traffic that's going to our target. 47. Let's just check. Seven. That's right. Okay, so there's that says capture in the traffic now. And we'll just have a little look to see what this tool is actually going to give us. Okay, so this is going to do a vulnerability scan uh, to be able to look at common exploits and so on and actually have a look to see what uh, what problems that we might have on, on the, the, the site. Okay, so what you can see from, from the trace is there's a lot of probing for different types of vulnerabilities. There's get docs and so on. So it's obviously using HTTP to be able to get access to the website and discover 
uh, the, the vulnerabilities actually on them. Okay, so already it's found there is a test folder, icons, and here is a PHP info .php file. There's my my PHP my admin uh, folder is uh, can be accessed. And if we look at our logs over here, uh, we'll probably see lots of accesses for different types of files, all from from the same uh, IP address. Okay, so this tends to be a high octane scan, as as we can see from our our Wireshark trace.
Okay, so so that uh, that's an interesting interesting package. So now what we'll do is we'll have a look to see if we can actually find all the folders.
Okay, so for the next part, what we'll do is we'll inject some uh, JavaScript. Uh, if if the web page is not checked for the input, uh, then uh, JavaScript can actually be injected into into the page. So we'll just open up the DNS lookup page. Uh, it's a simple PHP script. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just we'll just get rid of our proxy. Send it straight through. So in this case, it's just a simple page that takes takes our code, our domain name, and then gives us some IP addresses uh, from from them. When we actually look at the code, uh, we sh when we actually look at the code. The code that that comes through is that this word here comes straight through from the user unchecked. So what we can do is that we can then put in uh, a script. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll actually run burp suite and have a look at the request. Okay, so we'll go settings, there we go. Okay, so let's do that again. Okay, so then we go to let's start up Burp Suite. Okay, so let's do it again this time. Okay, so that's it coming through. So then we forward. Okay, then we go back here. Do look up, and then we'll just let that go through. And we should be able to see the the result coming back. Okay, so the second thing we did there was a post. And we can see here, here is the, the post that happens and there is the the details that, that goes through. So if we actually look at the response, what we should see is the code and then we, what we can do is that we can have a look at playing this back. So we'll go to our repeater. Okay, and this time what we'll do is we'll change this one to intel.com. And let's do a go.
So, so we can see we, we, we don't actually have a, the connection to the, to the destination, so we just need to set up the target here. So we need to modify the target here for our repeater, and we're going to ten two hundred zero and forty-seven. Yep. And now we do it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's that's what comes back. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the responses that came back. Okay. So this is one of the responses. We go to the comparator, paste it in there, and then we'll go to the other one that we did for the for intel.com for Google. Here we go. And Paste that one. Okay, two different times there. So we're going to we're going to compare the words, and there we go. So we have twenty one differences here. See the time was different, and so on. But the main differences should actually be, but later on. where we'll see that uh, we can we'll get the difference with the google.com and also with intel.com okay so there we go okay so the main differences uh, between the pages are these two elements here and the key thing to see is that uh, all that's really happening is that the wherever we put in actually appears here so the next thing we're going to do is to be able to inject some script into there because this is really just appearing uh, straight as, as text. There's There's been no check on on the user input here. Never trust the user input. So we'll just put up an alert box. So let's send that through. There we go. Okay, so there's there's the uh, there's the JavaScript coming through there. So if we wanted, we could actually have a look at that coming through. and see the, the code that we've actually inserted. So if you actually look at the HTML code, then it's possible to, all the links have uh, identifiers on them. So we can actually modify the the link, the links. And again, what we'll do is we'll just, I'll just copy from here, just to make sure I've got the right string. Okay, so we look for the A tag and we look for A tag zero, and then what we're going to do is replace that with the with the BBC site. Okay, so that goes in there. We do a lookup. Doesn't look like much happens. 
and the reason for that is that we need to send it through. Okay, it doesn't look like much has happened there, but there we go. See, BBC. And if we click on this link, and then unfortunately, oops, we go to the BBC site. There we go. So I get to the BBC site. And that's it. So it should call up BBC site in a minute. Maybe there's more things to come through. So what we're going to do now is to actually have a look at how we can set up uh, a remote script. Often what happens is that an intruder will load some special JavaScript into the site. So we'll set up on the on the Kali machine we'll set up the, the web server and then what we'll do is got we have some, some test JavaScript in here. It's just a simple one, it's just going to load a graphic and, and, and so on. Okay, so now what we'll do is that we're going to load the script from from our own site, from the Kali one, to here. Okay, so our IP address is config is twenty four. That's fine. Okay, so we just let burps sweet. Send it through, and there we go. Okay, so you can see that uh, the JavaScript has been injected into the into the page. Okay, so let's have a look at another type of uh, JavaScript injection. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just start up Burp Suite. And we'll set the, the web browser up to have a proxy. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll just access this page here. Okay, so it's going to do a password generator for this user who's anonymous. And then we'll capture it here. That's it coming through now. Okay, so here's the request. So what we'll do is that we'll have a look at that in a repeater. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just we have the right target. Yep. Okay, so there's the the response back. So if we want, we could copy that. and put it into a comparator. We'll get it in a little minute. But what we'll do is we'll send a canary. And then we'll have a look at the response that comes back. Okay, so we'll copy that one. 
and then we'll go back here and then we'll copy the response here okay so those are different responses and then we'll compare the words there we go so the six differences so we actually see that the difference if we can search for canary so that's our anonymous one and then we should be able to find our canary that is there okay so what we can do here because that that the word has just gone straight through is that we can now replace this part we can terminate the string and then we can put a, a catch after it and then put a try uh, to be able to inject the, the JavaScript in, in there. Okay, so I'll just copy this from here. Okay, so if we insert that string, then that will actually modify the codes to end that string and then for us to get this alert box to come up. So what we do is we'll take that. Okay, it probably won't go through if we just put it straight in. So what we must do is to go to our decoder. And then we want to encode as a, as a URL. And there we are. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to be able to open up it's, well, it doesn't really matter, we can repeat from burp suite here and now we can make the user name this and then inject that And then when we render, we should be able to get a pop-up box there. So let's check that we have that in place. go back and have a look at our browser that through and there we go <laughs> isn't that magic okay so that's allowed us to be able to uh, modify the JavaScript code to be able to get the uh, to be able to get it to, to display the, the box, but obviously I'm sure they can do much more than, than that. Okay, so let's let's try some SQL injection. So we go to this page and what we we'll do is we'll just put in some dummy information and we'll capture it with burp sweet. So let's see if we can see where this came through. There it is. Okay, so that's that's our that's our login. 
And what normally happens with uh, with SQL that's not in JIT is that we'll, we'll normally get like a select where a user, this is a variable for what comes in from the page and this is the password, this is the other variable and then the word goes in here between inverted commas but what can happen is an intruder can finish, terminate uh, the password and then do an or one equals one which is true and there's still another rogue inverted comma so they'll put in a comment after it and this way this will always be true so what we're trying to inject is this so we would go here and then what we'll do is we'll look at our decoder we then put that in and then that will give us we decode encode there's a url and then it will give us the basic string so then what we need to do is to be able to then to take that and then copy and paste and we'll now enter that as a username as a password okay so let's check that's okay okay there's the 2d and so on okay so we'll let uh, burp sweet send that through So we'll just do it with uh, an admin account. Okay, let's get that let's get that string just spot on. So a twenty we need a space the space the space at the start. Uh, it's missing off little character them. Just just missing off the little inverted comma there when I pasted it. Okay, so let's let that go through. Oh dear. Okay, so there we go. So you can see there, that's the problem that that can cause. So if we go over and have a look at our logs, we should be able to see that that SQL injection is coming through.